Buffalo, New York is one of the smallest markets in the NFL. The city's population doesn't even crack the top 50 in the United States, and its metro and combined statistical area barely crack the top 50. But somehow and some way, this city has an NFL team, something that many much larger markets do not have. So why is this, and how does it work? This is why the Buffalo Bills exist. 1959, the American Football League would begin to be established and it was decided that Buffalo, New York would play host to one of the first eight teams of this league. To understand why Buffalo would be chosen out of these eight teams that would begin the AFL, one only has to look at the city's population and ranking at the time. In 1960, the year the Bills would begin play, just the city of Buffalo itself was the 20th largest in the country, ranking higher than the likes of Phoenix, Miami, or even Atlanta at over 532,000, and this was after an 8% decline in the 1950s. On top of this, nearby Niagara Falls, New York would be reaching its population peak at just over 100,000 people. The not too distant city of Rochester, New York also had over 318,000 people at this point in time. All of these population numbers, combined with many more jobs at the time in the area, would make Buffalo a prime candidate for establishment in the AFL. And established they would be, and they would play their entire tenure in the AFL at War Memorial Stadium in Buffalo. However, after the AFL-NFL merger of 1970, the Bills from that point forward would be an NFL team. As War Memorial Stadium was not considered large enough for NFL play, what would become known as Rich Stadium would open in 1973, and the Bills have played in it under a variety of names ever since. Quite shockingly, despite Buffalo being one of the NFL's smallest markets, this stadium has maintained a status as one of the larger venues in the league by capacity. And while Buffalo has been able to maintain having a team, its stadium has been a point of contention for many years now. And one might wonder why, despite the fan support. However, one must look at the status of Buffalo and the surrounding area to understand. To put it simply, cities like Buffalo, Rochester, Niagara Falls, Syracuse, and others in the area have bled thousands upon thousands of people. In the 1970s alone, when Rich Stadium was being built in Orchard Park, the city of Buffalo lost over 100,000 people. Today Buffalo sits at almost exactly half of its 1950 population peak. As of 2020, sitting around 278,000 people, it is the second smallest metropolitan area to host an NFL team and is significantly smaller than many non-NFL metros. Thus, the funding sources have been limited, especially in an era where even an outdoor stadium costs over a billion and a half dollars. In fact, the only reason the Bills are getting a new stadium at all is due to a major handout from the state. So why is it that this Rust Belt team is still able to draw well and able to stay in Western New York? Well, the most important thing to look at is the regionalization of NFL teams. Despite Buffalo itself, and even its metro being relatively small by population standards. The region that the team covers, covers multiple highly populated cities, with the Buffalo and Rochester markets having over a million people each, and Syracuse having over 700,000. Then just across the border, you have the Golden Horseshoe region of Ontario, Canada, the most populated area of its size in the entire country of Canada, with over 9 million people. In fact, thousands of season ticket holders to the Bills come from Ontario, with likely many additional tickets being sold in single game form. The team endured through the 2000s and well into the 2010s without a playoff appearance, with many mediocre to bad seasons. In spite of this, and in spite of Buffalo and the surrounding area losing many people, and in spite of much discussion about the team potentially moving, the team has endured in the region and will only grow stronger with the likely success of the future, along with the presence of a new stadium. So why has this even happened at all? Well, Buffalo made a whole lot of sense in 1959 when the AFL teams were being established. It was big, and it was coming off a run of prosperity economically. The large and successful cities of today were not necessarily such when these teams were being established, with expansions and stadium leases occurring far between each other. New franchises or moves of franchises don't occur that often. Combine this with forgiving ownership in Ralph Wilson and the Pagulas, 
over a stadium that probably should have been replaced by now, combined with a strong market across the border helping to support the team, which is generally untapped by other teams, combined with the support of the rest of the Western New York region, the Bills remain, and will endure despite being a smaller market for many years to come. Thank you for watching.